we go. All right, guys. Uh, hello, uh, Solution Seekers. Coach Scott with you again out of Florida, where yet another hurricane is about to hit us. Uh, yet another reason why you need to be, live a sustainable lifestyle. And I'm glad you're following us because, as you know, I'm doing these interviews uh, one after another, and I'm interviewing people who believe in what I call a sustainable lifestyle. And today I have with me one of the powerhouses in the hemp industry. Uh, you've probably heard his name. If not, you're going to um, because he's growing and growing. Uh, so we've got with us today what I want to call the father of hemp. Uh, whether he goes by that name or not, uh, he's really, really good at his craft of uh, not only understanding how hemp goes together, but how it also, how it can be built and maybe even structured into other things. And we're going to ask those questions and a few more in today's interview. Uh, so today we have with us uh, Sergi, and um, I'm going to let him introduce himself. So Sergi, go right ahead. Hello. Hello, Scott. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Sergi Kovalenko. Uh, I'm a civil engineer by trade, and I've been in the hemp building industry for almost 15 years, uh, starting, uh, you know, learning about it in Australia and getting a few projects behind the belt in Europe and then going back, coming back to Ukraine uh, to start Hempire, you know, so I'm the founder of Hempire, I'm one of the founders of U.S. Hemp Building Association. Uh, president, current president of Ukrainian Hemp Building Association. So we are moving forward. Of course, uh, part of my entity is operating in U.S. We have uh, a company, an American company, producing our binder. So more or less, I've been, you know, around the globe, uh, teaching people, uh, educating uh, government officials, uh, speaking with uh, at different forums and conferences, you know, trying to really popularize this incredible material and uh, basically ready to talk about it right now again. Beautiful, beautiful. So, well, you've answered a couple of the questions that I had for going for you, but uh, let's expand a little bit on a how you found hemp to begin with and uh, why you became so passionate uh, to speak out about hemp, its growth, its use, uh, and everything about it? Well, the first uh, time I interacted with this material was in Australia. Uh, that's when the first ever hemp house in the history or modern history of Australia took place in Tasmania. Uh, and that was like 2010 and uh, what sparked me is the simplicity of this technology that meaning high scalability you know i was amazed that you can be constructing walls basically the entire box like with like three materials you know and i was amazed you know and uh, i couldn't find anything else to say beside that you know i always divide my life before introducing to this technology and after so it completely changed my life and uh, it just makes perfect sense for me as a person that's been in the construction industry for a while i uh, i immediately realized the opportunity you know this is the future it's quite it's quite clear now it's becoming the present of construction industry and right. uh, things are moving well a bit slow but at the exponential progression nice nice have you seen movement in the industry you kind of alluded to it just in your statement there but you know good and bad is is always kind of gone along with him because of how they've de demonized it in the past but do you see it growing or how do you see it going oh definitely growing you can you can tell by just by the amount of grants being offered uh in that specific field of sustainable construction or R and D, some type of uh, concept creation of different bio-based materials. We see more and more programs, you know, dedicated towards that. We understand that you cannot have an infinite growth in the economy with the finite amount of minerals on the planet. It's right. quite clear, you know, and uh, there is a huge housing shortage 
So this technology is essential in providing house, you know, in you know, you know, in trying to eliminate the house housing shortage all over the world. Now there is a housing shortage in every single country around the world. Right. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's the tool to create decentralized economies, definitely, and uh, learning how to grow it, how to cultivate it, how to process it, how to manufacture something out of it will kind of help, uh, you know, for the communities to survive if the tough time come or when they will come. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Um, what do you think, uh, are there any differences between regulations, good or bad, between Europe and the United States? Are they more open in Europe than they are here or restricted? Or what do you think? Uh, well, I have to say that in, in European Union, it's a little bit tricky because uh, the situation is you have a European Union building codes and then you have a local country. Uh, building codes because Europe has over 50 countries and uh, mm -hmm. you know building in Iceland and building in Cyprus uh, you have to you have to follow two different codes of course so it's sometimes uh, challenging to uh, create a product and then try to push it onto the market and then go into the other country to find out that uh, you have to have a special certificate for this product in order to sell it in this country. And that becomes the problematic to scale it up. That's the problem in Europe. In USA, it's just, uh, uh, I would say the hemp industry is it's at its infancy. There are more and more companies uh, getting into the uh, cultivation of hemp. We see more and more companies getting onto the seed uh, uh, production trade, uh, which is a good sign. You know, that means farmers are showing more and more interest towards uh, this uh, amazing plant so therefore uh, the dynamic is positive just to continue kind of from the previous question uh, definitely I see the amount of decorticators uh, growing really uh, you know the amount of companies that are purchasing decorticators and setting them up in different states uh, can definitely tell me the positive dynamic in the industry's development yeah I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah that's and exciting. Plus, plus uh, regarding the codes, you know, now we have the uh, the special appendix in the International Construction Code in ICC, you know, so now officially it's part of the International Residential Code. Uh, thanks to the hard work of uh, U.S. Hemp Building Association uh, members and officials, uh, it took five years to achieve that result, and it's a huge result starting from January 1st, 2024. Now architects can officially refer to the uh, separate appendix dedicated to hemp line. Nice. I did. I was not aware of that. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 big. So it's it's a it's a first step, but it's an important step, definitely. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. What do you think our listeners, both yours and mine? viewers and listeners what do you think they could or should be doing to help push this along so it's not just about warriors like yourself and myself it's about consumers because businesses listen when consumers talk with their money i believe um, but in your opinion what can our uh, viewers do to help the hemp industry well definitely talk about it the more the better mostly in positive yeah. context uh the more the more you talk about it the more the more you're being vocal about it the more other people around you find out more and more and that's why we kind of going and organizing this uh, various workshops and conferences around the world to educate people education is the key simply because no one knows about it still it's a very insignificant percentage of people that uh, know about this technology that uh, are willing to use it in their uh, design phase uh, of their construction projects. I'm talking about the builders, the architects, the engineers. Of course, then there is uh, building departments in different countries. There is different bureaucratic steps that you have to take in order to you know, build a brand new building. So uh, uh, definitely a, a way to move forward is to start growing it on the indigenous lands. 
where they don't need a license. You know, licensing is a you know could be a challenging step moving forward for the for farmers in different states and counties, right? So definitely, uh, indigenous people uh, can be leading the uh, this uh, uh, this movement of uh, hemp cultivation and green construction. You know, they and uh, I'm well aware that people on this land they've been doing it for many, many, many years. You know, unfortunately, it was a you know a little road bump of like 70, 80 years. Now we have to kind of bring it back here. I agree. I agree. And yeah, you're right. Uh, the awareness out there, anytime I say I sell hemp domes, people get kind of weird, you know, and they're like, oh, you know what, you know, if it catches on fire, you know, are, you, are we going to get high, you know, just silly jokes like that. Uh, but they don't have an awareness of the amazing properties of what hemp, hemp could revolutionize the world. It could change the world. I, I truly believe it. Everything that it can do and provide and the sustainability of it, of it being able to keep growing and growing and growing, and basically from seed to hemp wood, as an example, what, 120, 280 days. Yeah. You can't get that from normal wood or bamboo or anything else out there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's sad. Uh, it's uh, totally sad. Uh, we were talking about it with one of my friends, uh, a few years ago and uh, we were asking each other a question uh, if uh, cannabis and hemp wouldn't be banned uh, back in 1930s we probably would have lived in a different world right now can you imagine the amount of R&D that would be complete in terms of processing you know cultivation uh, seed genetics I mean oh my god it would be a different yeah. world you know it would and, be yeah Probably uh, this is the only plant in the world that could have such a huge economy impact around the world, you know, because it, you can cultivate it in every country of the world. So that's another incredible um, attribute of this plant. Uh, there are varieties for different altitudes, different climate zones, different latitudes. Uh, it's fantastic. You know, everywhere I, I went, uh, they grew hemp there before. Latin America grew hemp, Japan grew hemp, uh, Europe, obviously, North America, I mean, Asia, obviously, right? So there is huge, huge history. Uh, I'm sure they were growing hemp in, in Africa as well. Uh, there is a huge history with, uh, uh, I mean, uh, humans' history is just basically intertwined with, uh, with the cannabis and hemp, and we see this in many historical facts you know, that played a, cr a crucial role in some of the right. places around the world. Yeah. 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 You, you're correct. I know here in the States and it probably happened globally, but you mentioned the thirties and that was about the same time that Rockefeller and company started demonizing all things alternative because they were just starting up the pharmaceutical schools backed by the oil industry. And so, yeah, so since then, in America anyway, it has been demonized and made illegal uh, when it should have been pushed forward and made legal for all its other attributes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have to say that uh, if one plant uh, can provide you the clothing, the housing, food and the medicine, I think those are the four major things you need for survival. Everything else is kind of like a luxury. I think right. then this plant has a lot to offer you know and uh, of course petrochemical companies paper uh you know mill uh, different timber mill companies uh, they saw hemp as a huge uh, threat of course right and right. just yeah. after they introduced the marijuana tax uh, act uh, you know and uh, made it all illegal or non-feasible to grow in the case in the case of hemp then the year after DuPont patented nylon synthetic fiber, uh, and that was the that was the the beginning of synthetic fibers era. And uh, like I said, we would have lived in a in a different world. You know, we would have yes. much much less plastic. You know, in in our oceans, rivers, water. I mean, it's everywhere now. Right? For sure, for sure. What do you think? Um, I teach sustainability. But sustainability means a lot of different things. What do you think sustainability means uh, for us, for the planet, and for our viewers? 
sustainability, I would say it's a intelligent use of local resources, you know, and uh, uh, as you remember, 20, 30 years ago, it was okay to import stuff from China into US. Now mm -hmm. things got more expensive in China. Now things are changing. You know, you cannot always put all the eggs in the same basket. It's going to bite you back. So, of course, uh, it's important to have different hemp programs spread around using universities to develop local genetics, you know, so they could help local farmers without searching and spending their own money figuring stuff out and, you know, burning through cash every year. Uh, because hemp is not an easiest plant to cultivate and, and, and process, as many farmers already realized in the U.S. This is not potatoes or corn. This is a little bit of a different animal, right? <laughs> right, right. So it takes, it takes, it takes, it will take some time. And sustainability, in my sense, is yeah. When you have, uh, when you are no longer importing hemp herds for your construction products, uh, into U.S., you know, you're using local in-state variety i understand that the time will have to pass by uh but of course you know i don't want to bring hemp herds from 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 ukraine into australia for example right australia has got to have their own hemp herds so that, right. in my in my understanding that's sustainable you know because yes. when we uh, founded hempire i i always like to say it we only had two principles you know we develop products that are 100 percent natural so no you know no bargain there. Like it has to be 100% natural and it had to be 100% Ukrainian. And when people told me like, don't bother, start, you know, importing stuff that's already out there on the market in Europe. I said, no, we have to find the solution to make it out of Ukrainian minerals. And uh, then we have successfully developed a binder that was 100% Ukrainian. And uh, during the pandemic and during the war, we continue to insulate and uh, build hemp houses for that reason only. Uh, would I follow that advice from other people? Uh, yeah, we wouldn't be doing anything right now because it's, it's, course, such, yeah. it's a big mess at the border right now, importing stuff. Just I'm sure it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, so when tough times come, uh, like I said, like every territory, every country will be left one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the technologies that uh, it currently possesses. So it's important to spread the knowledge about hemp cultivation processing and manufacturing because, you know, we would be helping many, many communities around the world to survive if something bad happens. Nice. Good, good outlook on that. So this is going to be one of my next questions. So you mentioned Empire. So tell us a little bit more about your company. Uh, what you produce, uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about your binder. Mm -hmm. Empire, uh, we found it in 2015 in Ukraine. So that's the company that uh, started to manufacture uh, Ukrainian local natural made uh, binder for hemp lime applications. Uh, we started to we started to actually build houses as well because uh, you know people wouldn't believe me until they see a house so the very first project in ukraine was very challenging to find you know <laughs> and uh, after i got one that's it that's all i needed only one right and then i started to bring people in and uh, so empire was manufacturing materials was selling the binder and the herds for hemp lime applications but as well as we were the you know the contractor that would execute the job you know uh, now we're mostly, uh, yeah, into material supply type of operations, although we still continue to execute some of the projects, yes. So now we gotcha. see more and more contractors showing up in Ukraine, uh, you, you know, doing do, doing the same similar things, which is a good sign. Nice. And uh, now we have uh, American entity where we manufacture 100% uh, American binder for hemp lime applications as well as we're probably going to be uh, selling the minerals too uh separately nice. just to help just to help uh, just to help uh, people push this whole thing forward and uh basically now uh we are we have uh 
collected uh, a range of uh, very interesting projects behind our belt. As you have seen, some of them are, you know, round houses, some of them are dome shaped houses. And uh, the very first uh, dome that we have insulated with hemp lime was in 2015. So on the very first year of our operations. Uh, and uh, after that, we've been working with insulating existing uh, structures, you know, like reinforced concrete, stone, seeing how the material reacts. Also, hemp wire has been behind uh, an incredible number of different tests that we executed in Ukraine. So it's not just the practical experience we possess, but we also have been testing the material extensively to understand its properties and how it reacts. Uh, which was very, very beneficial. And uh, now Hempire is, yeah, it's part of Ukrainian Hemp Building Association, and that's the entity through which we're going to be connecting uh, Ukrainian and uh, international companies that would yeah. want to join our efforts uh, in rebuilding Ukraine with sustainable materials. Nice. Wonderful, wonderful. Walk us through real quick uh, the materials needed to make hempcrete and uh, how... Why your binder? What does it do for the hempcrete? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, you need only three ingredients to mix hempcrete. Right. Now, the technical, the proper word, the terminology now it's hemp lime. They don't want us to say hempcrete, so to remove the analogy from uh, with with concrete, and uh, mm -hmm. that's what been people kind of uh bragging about you know hempcrete hempcrete you know what's the difference between hempcrete and concrete so i always like to say hemp lime now and it's the correct uh, terminology for the icc international construction code uh, okay. uh, uh, and uh, basically the binder uh, that we use allows us to insulate any type of surfaces and remove the formwork right away even if we're talking about the domes you know so only at the very top we would hold it on for a bit, but uh, we make uh, the mixture so it's extremely light uh, with a higher thermal performance of the wall, you know, so our binder allows us to move really fast. Uh, but every time we execute projects, uh, we show how quickly it is to produce a mix out of it. It takes a minute. I demonstrated it uh, the other day on the video, how you put, it takes one minute uh, to put all the ingredients in, you know, and uh, basically the actual mixing was taking like in place for like you know, 10, 15 seconds, you know. So it's all about the efficiency. So the binder that we use, uh, fifth element, is the one that allows us to quickly mix it, prepare the mix, and quickly install it and detach the foam work. Uh, so time is money. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. And so for those who don't know, guys, the three ingredients he's talking about are hemp herd, water and lime. That's and that's what you use to make uh, hemp cream or hemp lime now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's only three ingredients. And uh, mm, that's why it's so simple. Uh, and yeah. yet, you know, of course, there are different uh, perks and tweaks, but more or less, uh, it's incredibly simple and highly scalable. Yeah, which is, again, why we have decided in our personal dome home and the domes that we sell to utilize hempcrete because those three ingredients, you can pronounce those names, those words. There's not chemicals in them, and they're a much healthier alternative for housing for people, for breathability not having mold, not having chemical intrusion in the house and that type of thing. Well, there are chemicals, but they're natural chemicals, right? Natural so there is, no, there, is no, there is no toxic toxic components. And that's the important part is that uh, people need to understand that, uh, you know, if you're building yourself a healthy home, then you are, you know, feeling better, you recover quickly. If you are surround yourself with toxic materials, then you're slowly killing yourself, not letting your body fully recover during the night. You come out of the house and all of a sudden you start feeling better. And uh, there is such thing as sick building syndrome. And people don't realize that for years they've been poisoning themselves in the office or in their own homes. So the health aspect of hemp lime has always been 
overlooked. Everyone's talking about carbon credits. Everyone's talking about the, the R value, this and that. Mm, but the main, uh, for me, the main topic of discussion here is people's health. How much does people's health cost? You know, for example, the I agree. house owner, you know, it's priceless. You don't, you don't ever want to see your children, you know, having all kinds of allergies and uh, allergies, you know, children are very susceptible to that and they're very sensitive to that, you know, and a lot of times it's not food or the environment is just like uh, our environment. Yeah. It's, it's internal environment full of toxic stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Last question I have for you today is, as you know, we're building and selling dome kits. You have done domes before, and I believe you've probably worked with one of the kits that we're actually selling. So you've got some experience there, or at least something similar. What would you say are some things that I need to consider uh, and uh, prepare for before I actually get into building my hempcrete dome? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> I would say that mm, the structural frame, uh, the design of the structural frame initially uh, will be a very important step forward because you got to make sure that you comply with the local regulations uh, in terms of, you know, if you're building in Florida, as you know, there is a hurricane approaching. So uh, dome structures, I believe this is one of the best solutions for the, uh, uh, you know, earthquake or hurricane prone zones. It kind of right. makes perfect sense. You know, there is no overhang and there is no uplift force to take that roof away uh, in the dome structure. So, of course, paying attention, close attention to designing a dome that can withstand extreme amount of pressure from the wind uh is the way to move forward and uh, what i like about the domes is that the structural frame members the truss system members they work hand in hand with hemp lime in between the elements and making it an extremely structurally sound building you know and of course you have to uh watch out you know for the orientation of the of the windows uh the size of those windows uh the structural integrity of the building and uh, mm, you know of course the roofing the roofing part would be challenging right anything that's uh of a dome shape it's a little bit different than just your hip to gable roof you know so right 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 but yeah. from what from what I have uh, from what I have experienced, it's an amazing uh, building. It's very understandable. It's clear, extremely energy efficient. Domes are the most energy efficient structures. You know, there are no dead corners between the 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 the, the walls and right. the roof. You know, so these things are uh, these things are crucial to um, to consider you know i would say you know being friends with your building department is the first step moving forward because you know domes uh yeah it's a little bit different it's novel and yeah yeah it's very true uh, we've got just here in florida some counties that are a little more lenient and others uh, others that are like nope we need to see documentation uh some that say no uh, until we have to go in and muscle them and say, look, domes are strong. Here's the proof. Uh, they're better for hurricanes. So they'll, you know, uh, let's uh, let's work. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an interesting uh, battle I'm going to have going forward whenever I start to sell this state to state to state. Because I'm going to have so many different municipalities that are going to be saying yes or no. And like you said, it's a novelty. So do they even know about it? Uh, and are they prone to uh, saying no just right off the bat? So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But uh, as I get more documentation, and like you said, we just need to get one. And as soon as we get one, then it'll start to kind of build like wildfire on top of it. You know, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. So well, uh, then, then, then you will see, then you will be able to showcase the true strength of hemp lime 
you know, to the interested parties. So that's Absolutely. important to understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or you have to get the one. You know? Yeah. Do you think uh, in terms of being strong, like you're talking about, do you think it's better to totally encapsulate it and then seal it, making it a smooth structure? Or is it OK putting shingles on the outside, making it look like a standard home having shingles? Because on the inside, the, the hemp is a little different, right? It's got to go in between in between those trusses you were talking about. So it's not as encapsulated. So how do you think strength wise uh, that that handles it? Well, it depends on the design. Of course, the design will govern all the all domes are different. You know, you can have like an ellipse uh, type of uh, dome. You can have like an egg shell, right? So the mm, I guess the climate zone where you're building the dome is also crucial, right? Uh, if you are if you live in a warm climate, uh, sealing it makes sense you know and uh but then again you would you can have regular shingles you can have timber shingles timber shingles look really cool but it's a more of an expensive option so it it always depends on where you live you know how would you seal those timber shingles if you would have them because they would get dark over time you know so these things are important to consider All right yeah absolutely well once we start our builds, we'll uh, invite you over. And uh, for the viewers who didn't see uh, or hear, um, you hail from Europe. You hail from the Ukraine. And so I'll just uh, give you a little bit of uh, opportunity there to uh, how is Ukraine doing with the uh, war effort that's going on? How how you you have friends and family that have been impacted? Are you in a safe area where you live? How's that going right now? Well, you know, it's a it's a bit of a problem, of course, for the entire nation, you know, and uh, the the war has been affecting, you know, the entire country, and I mean, not the entire country, the entire world. But of course, living in such stressful conditions create all kinds of problems, you know, social problems. Uh, you know psychological problems and right now people of ukraine are basically you know suffering a lot and uh, i of course i i hope that this madness stops because uh it's just pure pure evil and i'm just talking about specifically ukrainian people you know the the entire nation because uh, the entire nation not not just ukrainians that suffer inside the country but there are many ukrainians that suffer outside the country and uh, people that are trying to help in the communities all around the world and uh, i've seen incredible stories how other countries are helping ukraine and i'm forever grateful to other people there are a lot of incredible people all around the world and uh, a lot of beautiful people and very kind and compassionate and empathic so uh, of course, we need all that because, you know, you, uh, living in, you know, it's been almost three years now. It's actually the war was going on for 10 years, you know, uh, right. but the full scale mm -hmm. invasion only three years. And uh, it's going to uh, set Ukraine back for decades and decades, you know, uh, yeah, 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 it's it's crazy. Entire cities and towns uh, leveled, you know, destroyed. And uh, that's the problem. Unfortunately, people living on the territories that are full of uh, rich resources, rare minerals that eventually are going to be sorted by some companies. So it's a big it's a big problem in today's world, you know, that we don't understand, you know, that we can be very uh, friendly towards each other. You know, not acting like savages, but there are so many wars around the world these days that you know I'm I'm a bit upset and disappointed that uh, as a society we should have been much much more advanced species, but no, we are very primitive. Yeah, you're you're very right about that, and you know I I believe unfortunately part of it comes down to money and control uh, because war is not righteous these days. War is about somebody wanting to make money right defense contractors the oil tycoons the banks these types of people and 
as long as people, those entities exist, then we'll always have war, specifically the defense contractors, because that's how they make money, by selling guns, bombs, tanks, missiles, rockets, airplanes. And yeah, it's it's sad state of affairs that people have to die for those efforts. Uh, you yeah. know, you know, un unfortunately. It's crazy. It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, unfortunately. and we've seen it in other countries as well. So it's it's just crazy, pure craziness. Yeah, I hope it stops soon. Yeah, same here. Well, we just keep spreading the message. Uh, hopefully enough people. It's, it's about consciousness, I believe. We have to reach a tipping point in the consciousness because it's not about singing just kumbaya uh, because there needs to be some effort put in to stopping the madness, right? Uh, so... But if enough of us can get a peaceful mindset, the consciousness can overrule the death consciousness that's out there right now. Uh, I believe it. You yeah, know, so yeah. we just, we just got to get enough people aware of this. You know, so I agree with you. I agree with you. All right. Beautiful. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. Do you have anything else uh, you'd like to tell people? Like, how would they like to... How would you like them to contact you as an example if they have anything to ask or maybe they live in the Euro European Union and they'd like to get some product from you? And how can uh, they find the binder here in the States? Well, they can reach us at uh, hempire.com.ua. That's the Ukrainian website. Uh, and hempire.tech for North American and uh, world operations. You know, so it's very... It's very simple. Yeah, you can find us a lot on social media. So one way or the other, you will, you know, if you type in Empire and Hemp Building, yeah, one way or the other, you'll find us on social you'll media. You'll find us, yeah. I typed in just Empire earlier, and I didn't realize it, but apparently there's a video game out there called that's Empire. A, that, yeah, that's been out there for a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. And, yeah, it was it, it was flooding my page all of a sudden with video yeah. and stuff, and I was like, oh, "Get off my screen!" <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, true. So. It's true. Okay, great. So I will, guys. As always, I will post his links below so you can find them really easily from this video. And as always, if you have any questions for me uh, or Sergey, you just simply put them below here, and we'll make sure that he gets them as well. So at any point, this is Coach Scott uh, seeking out sustainers, um, seekers, um, because we need you guys. We need you looking for sustainable solutions uh, that are out there, bringing them to light, bringing them to the world. And this is what people like Sergey and myself are trying to do and trying to help educate you. So other than that, Coach Scott, peace out.